In today's video, we will reveal hidden magic secrets, from Eric Chen's astonishing coin and rose act, to Chloe Crawford's dangerous razor blade swallowing stunt. As a bonus we will also be covering famous levitation and mind reading tricks as well. Without any further ado, let's begin. Chloe Crawford's illusions. Let's do a quick recap of what happened in the performance. Chloe's illusions begin with her tossing her hat, switching her black suit to a red dress magically, and inviting one of the judges to the stage. On the stage, she picks up a magazine and cuts several pages of the magazine with five razor blades consecutively. She puts each blade in her mouth after cutting a page of the magazine, drinks a glass of water, and eats a cotton thread. Thereafter, she opens her mouth which happens to be empty, and performs one of the most amazing illusions ever performed live on stage. The magician pulls out the thread she initially swallowed and on the thread is each of the blades she gulped with a glass of water. Additionally, Chloe picks another thread, slides it through her neck, and pulls out the fifth razor blade without cutting through her neck. How did the magician perform her illusions? Here are explanations. Looking carefully, we observe that the tux looks utterly large on her. To make it unnoticed that she removes the suit rather than transforming it magically, she pulls up a curtain to trick the audience. Therefore, the red dress her suit presumably changes to is worn underneath the suit. The tux is completely split into half from behind but coupled together with little pieces of velcro. As a result, the magician takes the suit off easily just by pulling it forward forcefully to break the pieces of velcro holding it together. From the beginning of the subsequent trick where Chloe eats the razor blades, we notice a few things. She already has blades knotted with strings in her mouth and these blades are positioned at the bottom of her right cheek. For more clarity, a bump can be seen at the base of her right cheek. Additionally, we discover a setup when she opens her mouth to put the blades in it. Only one side of the blades is sharp while the other side is blunt and she places them carefully in her mouth in a certain alignment. After drinking from the glass cup to swallow the blades down her throat, the magician turns the glass upside down. Looking closely, the glass cup is visibly empty before she lifts it to drink from it. As it turns out, the rim of the glass contains a magnet and the razor blades are magnetic objects made of steel. We can see the blades attached to the glass when she turns the glass upside down to make it seem like she is trying to prove that she drank the water. Therefore, she did that to place the sharp blades in the glass cup and kept the blunt blades buried in her right cheek as mentioned above. After swallowing the thread, the magician can be seen moving her fingers toward her left cheek in search of the thread connecting the four blunt blades. Once she finds the thread, she pulls it out of her right cheek with the blunt blades knotted to it. The bluntness of the blades knotted with thread explains why she pulls them out from her mouth without cutting herself. Hence, Chloe swallowed the thread to trick the audience into thinking she initially swallowed the blade and knotted them magically. During her last trick, the magician pulls a string of thread from a floss thread and at this moment there is a camera cut. The cut is done because the thread she is pulling out has a razor blade tied to it. She places the blade in her right hand and performs a trick with thread to make it seem like she pulled the blade from her neck. On her neck, there is a visible shine on it which is a result of the trick she performs. To get this trick done, Chloe applies rubber cement glue on her neck and allows it to dry up. She places the thread with the blade on it across the area she applied the glue, drops her head, and raises it back up. Her lower skin gets glued to her upper skin, and it seems like the thread has gone through her skin. Afterward, she pulls the thread back and forth and draws it out making it seem like it is ripping through her skin. Kitch's Ring Levitation Trick Let's do a quick recap of what happened in the performance. Kitch's ring levitation trick begins with him inviting Heidi to the stage. While on stage the magician brings out a blindfold, asks the judge to confirm that he can't see through, and he puts it on. Afterward, he wears a ring on her index finger, takes it off, and makes the ring float in the air. With the ring in the air, Kitch executes one of the most fascinating tricks while he has his blindfold on. He moves the ring and wears it on Heidi's index finger again without touching it or her moving her finger. Wondering how he pulled his tricks off? Here are explanations. When Kitch takes the ring off Heidi's finger, he stretches his left hand and slides it along an invisible thread attached to his blindfold. This is done to locate the tip of the invisible thread with which a sticky material is attached. Once the magician gets his hand on the sticky object, he uses it to bind the ring to the thread. Thereafter, he spins it, makes hand gestures to make it seem like he's levitating the ring, and wears it on Heidi's finger without touching it. The magician uses an invisible thread to perform his ring floating trick. To make it work, he makes use of two magician's wax which he knots with one end of the thread and binds to the ring. The other wax however he knots with the other end of the invisible thread and attaches to his blindfold. He binds one end of it to the blindfold and leaves the other end hanging freely. 
the ring rotates along the y-axis, whereas you would expect it to spin along the x-axis but that's not the case as you can see in this slowed down demonstration when the magician spins it. The reason behind this is angular momentum. As a result, the ring begins to teeter whenever the speed of the rotation reduces. In addition, he dodges the invisible thread on purpose when he moves his finger above and below it in a circular motion. We notice that his forehead is vertically parallel to the position of the ring the whole time and even when he floats it into Heidi's finger. The splat of the wax is visible on the outer part of the ring when it settles on Heidi's finger which solidifies our explanation of how the wax is attached. With the ring not floating in the air, the magician grabs the ring from Heidi's index finger at the end and detaches the wax. He did this because his trick could be undone if he removes his blindfold with the ring still connected to it. Aiden's Balloon Illusion Let's do a quick recap of what happened in the performance. The show begins with Simon choosing a card from Aiden's deck of alphabet cards, him presenting Heidi with a gift box, and inviting Terry to the stage. While on stage, the magician hands over some darts to Terry. Subsequently, he asks Simon to choose a balloon that doesn't contain his prediction out of the four balloons displayed on the stage. Simon chooses the pink balloon, Howie chooses the yellow balloon, Heidi picks the blue balloon, and all are empty after Terry pops them. The fourth balloon is the green balloon and it contains the magician's prediction which is a purple octopus card. At the beginning of his showmanship when Simon chose a card from his deck, Aiden told him to keep it hidden. However, once the green balloon bursts and the magician shows his prediction, he asks the judge to show his card. Fascinatingly, the card appears to be a purple octopus card and Heidi's gift box contains a purple octopus doll. To prove that he knew all along that his predictions are right, everyone gets a balloon, and in each balloon is a purple octopus card. How did the young magician perform his tricks? Well, here is the explanation. At the beginning of the illusion, when Aiden asks Simon to choose from his deck of cards, he uses the slip force to force the selection. To perform this move, the magician applies pressure on the deck by gripping it with his left hand's pinky, ring, and middle finger. Also, he places his thumb on the top corner of the deck and coils his index finger on the back of the deck. Thereafter, Aiden rifles down the side of the deck with his thumb till Simon calls him to stop. Once the magician stops, he places his right hand on the deck and applies pressure on the deck with his left middle, ring, and index finger. With his left hand applying pressure to the top of the deck, he draws out the cards in the upper deck excluding the card on top. This move allows Aiden to slip the card on top of the deck right down when Simon calls him to stop and hands it over. The part where the magician asks the judges to pick their preferred balloon was a free selection as he didn't force the choices they made. However, each of the balloons chosen by the judges contains a small piece of cardboard paper that has the same color as the balloon containing it. Therefore, when the balloons are popped, the cardboard in each of them does not raise suspicion since it has a similar color to the balloon. However, once all three balloons chosen by the judges are popped, he walks over to the fourth balloon with his hand in his right pocket. This is because he has a folded up octopus card in his pocket. When he picks up the green balloon, he shakes it to prove that it is not empty. But like the previously popped balloons, it contains cardboard paper that has the same color as the balloon. While Aiden shakes the balloon, we notice that there are several objects in it. These objects are oddly shaped because they are torn up pieces, and not rectangular like the card he eventually picks from the already popped balloon. Therefore, the card he picks from the already popped green balloon is still outside the balloon and in his hand before Terry pops it. Furthermore, the gift box he gave Heidi at the beginning of his show appears to be an octopus doll. Therefore, it is pretty clear that he forces the selection of the octopus the whole time. Xavier's Levitation Balance Illusion At the beginning of the trick, Xavier is reading a book and comfortably sitting on his chair. A man comes from behind him and pulls his chair from his backside. Rather than falling and landing on his backside on the ground something amazing happens. The magician appears to be balanced in the air, defying the laws of gravity or sitting on an invisible chair. While sitting in the air, he is told to lift his feet and he lifts his left foot. Even as he raises his left leg, his body sits comfortably in the air and he doesn't seem to be in any distress. How did Xavier perform his illusions? Well, here is the secret. To maintain his balance, he is wearing support while sitting on his chair. The support is right under his right leg and it prevents him from falling to the ground when his chair is pulled off his backside. Also, it has a base that spreads out his body mass while he balances his right leg on it. In the entire video, the magician is wearing short pants, and the clip is shot from every angle but the support is not visible. To confirm that his right leg indeed has support underneath it, Xavier only raises his left leg to check if his chair was pulled from his backside. Although it is invisible, it is right there as it is the only reason he can sit comfortably in the air. 
However, to make it invisible in the video, the video was edited using the chroma key effect which is similar to a green screen. To make the video editing possible, the support his right leg is sitting on is painted green which is like the requirement for a green screen editing. Furthermore, the shadow of the support beam Xavier is sitting on is not visible in the clip before it is right underneath his right leg. Hence, it does not interfere with the shadows seen in the background in the video. If he is sitting on a green chair rather than using the aforementioned support beam, manipulating its shadow will make the clip seem odd. Eric Chen's Rose Trick Let's do a quick recap of what happened in the performance. Eric starts of the performance by inviting Heidi to sit with him at a table on the stage. The magician picks a red rose flower from the table leaving two petals of the flower on both ends of the table. He turns the rose petal on the right side of the table into a coin, picks the coin, and makes it vanish into thin air. After a few seconds, he makes the coin reappear in his hands and vanish continuously and transforms it into a red envelope. This envelope has four white blank cards in it but he magically puts an image on all four of them. Afterward, Eric picks the second rose petal and turns it into a blank white card. The magician touches the table with the card to make the coin reappear and drops the card on it. Following that, he picks up the rose and pushes the blank card off the table with it. Three coins appear next to the aforementioned coin and Eric drops the rose on them and they transform into a picture of the judges. He puts the rose in a flower glass that appears in his hands and gives it to Heidi. How did he perform his tricks? Here is an explanation. The magician transforms the red rose petal into a coin by using the flap mechanism trick. The flap is a camouflaged magnetic paper card that has the exact design of the pinewood table. This camouflaged card is placed above the coin and the rose petal is placed above the card. Eric flips the card over with the petal on it by attracting it magnetically to make the coin appear. He performs this trick perfectly using a silent assistant magnetic gimmick attached to his right hand. It isn't noticeable because the gimmick is hidden in plain sight. Even if we look closely it can't be detected because its color is the same as the color of Eric's palm. The magician makes the coin disappear from his hand and reappears continuously by using the coin retention technique. He did this by pulling the coin into his coiled up fingers with his right thumb in a split second. Before he transforms the coin into the red envelope, we notice his left hand go under the table. Although we don't notice the envelope in his left hand when he brings out his hand, it is not visible because the red envelope is in a tenkai palm which conceals it from every sight. Once Eric grabs the red envelope with his left hand, he brings it close to his chest area and pushes it against his chest. Thereafter, he places his left thumb under the envelope and pinches his thumb and index finger to reveal the envelope. At the same time, he does the coin retention trick to make it seem like he turns the coin into a red envelope. Although he appears to bring out four cards, he had five cards in his hand. We will provide a diagram to explain how he performs the trick. In the diagram, the cards above are the faces of the cards while the cards below are the backsides. The first card from the left is completely blank and labeled B while the back of the cards with an image is labeled A in the diagram. Only the face of the remaining four cards are blank while the back has an image that seems to appear magically during his trick. When he showed the cards to the audience, he didn't show both sides of the cards. Instead, he shows only both sides of the card that is blank on both sides and shows just one side of the remaining cards. To make the images appear on the cards, he flips just three of the cards over to turn the cards to the other side. Two cards are remaining in his hands but make it seem like he has just one card that is blank on both sides. Afterward, he performs a Bertram change move to transform the last two cards into a picture card. This is done by slipping the double side blank card into a tenkai palm and placing the card at the top above the bottom card. The magician makes use of the aforementioned flap mechanism to make it seem like he magically turns the petal into a white card. He made the coin appear by flipping a camouflaged picture card with the American wood pine design. The coins are thin and are already on top of the table but are stacked on top of each other. Also, a small white card is placed on the thin stacked up coins and that is what the magician appears to lift off the table. Then he swipes the white card towards himself to camouflage the card with the table and places the white card on the spot. Thereafter, Eric flicks the card to make the coins appear in a straight line with two invisible wire strands noticeable when we zoom into the video. The magician uses the wire to pull the card when his hand went behind the table. He ensures that he pulls the thread at the same time as tapping the rose on the table. Besides pulling the thread, the magician's hand behind the table grabs a small glass. Additionally, we notice that the four coins are positioned right above the four photographs, but don't fall off when the photographs are unfolded. They didn't fall off because there are four shim magnets which are extremely thin in the photographs. 
Additionally, each of the magnets keeps the coins split apart from one another and on a straight line. Furthermore, a shadowy line that can be seen on the table is the edge of the folded card that has the faces of the judges on it. When the magician reveals the card, he holds the glass we mentioned above diagonally to conceal it behind his fingers. To make it appear, Eric twists his left wrist to turn the glass upwards and puts the flower in it. 